Little Beats, Chris, your, your friendly little uh, MP here. Uh, I got uh, uh, some comments that I wanted to answer, or questions actually, in my U.S. Army MP vlog. It was 6 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, from Mandrix37911. I'll put your name right here. Okay? It might be like up above me or something. Um, Mandrix, hi. How are you? Checked out your videos. Uh, you can play the guitar very well. I can't. Um, here goes, uh, first question, and uh, address me as a hey bud. Uh, I, I commented something back, and I'm sorry if you read it, it said something about uh, don't call me bud, or it's not cool to call me bud, but what I meant by it was, when I was a, an E1 private coming in, long time ago, rank long time ago, uh, I had a specialist promotable who used to call me bud every day, and it was really... It was more of a degrading button. I know you meant like, you know, buddy Biden, hey friend, hey this person, this and that. Um, hey bud, to me, I, I got called hey bud for like almost a year straight and I really didn't appreciate it when he did call me bud. So if you want to call me bud, that's fine. Also, if you're going to basic training uh, February 13th, uh, for you going in February, I wouldn't uh, make it a, a habit of calling people Bud, because if you call Drill Sergeant Bud, or people in your unit Bud, or people in basic training Bud, they're probably not going to like it. They might be from different walks of life, that Bud isn't a normally used concept. I know you didn't mean anything by it, so just me rambling about the same thing over and over again. Okay, getting to your question. Um, a future soldier is 31 Bravo. Uh, thank you for being this up. Uh, thank you for opening this up for questions and etc. Question 1. Is it true that OSA training for 31 Bravos at Fort Leonard Wood is generally more strict as far as we can pass in such as other MOSs? Well, basic training now is a lot different from basic training when I went through. I went through and back in 2002. Uh, when I went through in 2002, uh, we actually only got two four-hour passes and one overnight. And that was near the end. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. So two four-hour passes and one overnight, and it was sick training of OSA is very strict. Uh, you're going to go through phases. I don't want to give too much information out about the actual basic training because it's an adventure to actually go through it. I, I got a drill sergeant that I work with, so I could ask him to, to more elaborate, but to actually do a basic training video, but I don't think he'd want to be on camera. But I can't take his information and pass it on because he just came off the trail about a, less than a year ago. So, um, but yes, there's phases and it is strict and you have to stand at attention and pray to rest a lot and PT will be hard and Fort Leonard Wood's not that bad. If you're going in February, it's going to be cold and then it's going to be warm. So you're lucky. You can roll into March, and April, March, April, yeah, into April. So it should be nice. I was there in October and it was cold. Question two. Sorry to go so long on that. Uh, it is stricter than most MOSs. We are held to a higher standard. So remember that. MPs are held to a higher standard. I know a lot of people like to talk smack about MPs, but you're going to hear that the entire time you're an MP. Uh, so yes, we are held to a higher standard than every other MOS. I don't care, unless they're old guard or something like that. Uh, we are held to a much higher standard than any other MOS. If you're an infantryman, you can get a DUI, you're good. We get a DUI, we're done. You know, And if we're not done, we're, we lost everything that you've worked for in your entire career. So number question number two, because I don't want to make this too long right here. Question number two, if you screw up on something basic like AT, do you have a fair chance of getting it right or kind of like two strikes and you're out, laugh out loud? I mean, I know they've got to draw a line somewhere. I hope that makes sense. Again, thanks. Okay, when you're in basic training, yes, you can make mistakes. You can make mistakes in basic training. I personally, uh, I slipped and fell a couple times, but I don't know if that counts as a mistake. Uh, you just have to be where you need to be. So if they give you a time, be there. And I'm pretty sure the 30 other guys that live in your bay will kick you and kick your bed and, and make sure that you're there at formation every morning. And in the right uniform. That's the other thing. Uh, right place uh, on time, in the right uniform, and doing what you need to be doing. Uh, it's pretty simple. You could get in trouble uh, if there's females, which there might be as MPs. We, we train with females and we go to base training with females. They're in different bays, obviously. but. Um, stay away from them. Don't flirt with them because you will get in trouble. Just, just do what you need to be doing. And if not, 
you'll be in trouble there. build camaraderie because believe it or not the guys you go through basic training with you may see them again in your military career especially as an MP since you make up less than you know 10 20 percent of the army or a very small bunch so that's my video um, if you have any other questions uh, send them comment them below this video this episode 10 or send them to me directly and I will answer your questions so uh, thanks for the, the input and uh, have a nice day and uh, today's September 11th uh, 2011 the 10 year anniversary of uh, September 11th so I was awake at 7.30 September 11th I was working I was 19 years old in Santa Clara California uh, as an audiovisual technician so I wasn't in the military yet obviously and what happened was was I was working People yelled, the cameras, our cameras, the TV was fixated to CNN or Fox News uh, when the planes hit the building. Uh, and I was working actually, I was laying cable uh, for presentations. And everyone was freaking out at the hotel, because I worked at a hotel. Uh, and I continued working. I had a job to do and it had to get done. And the hotel wasn't stopping. The meetings were still happening. They were going on at 10 a.m. And believe it or not, the meetings went on. The meetings went on. They had a moment of silence for all the people that passed away so far at the buildings. And their Cisco systems, Apple computer, whatever they were, went on. And I was there at the mixing board. So I couldn't take time off. We felt, you know, for the people on the East Coast and New York City, and, you know, I did especially. And, you know, we were... With moment of silence, you know, I actually, uh, you know, was very, you know, very taken back by all the people coming together, and this paid off. I didn't join because of 9/11. Uh, it didn't stop me. It didn't, you know, make me want to jump in and, and 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 sign up right then because I almost waited an entire year before I joined. Yeah, more than a year to join up. So, but. I did, and I knew it was in a time of war, and I still did it, and I'm still here. So, you know, deployments later, I'm still here, and I, uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to say, that we can all have a moment of silence today. 